Hello, this is Gary L., co-host of The Road Less Traveled, an internet video show that airs weekly on reallibertymedia.com and memefilter.info. I'd like to offer my many thanks to Ed Griffin and Michael Murphy for providing the excellent documentary, What in the World Are They Spraying? It's very well produced and presented and displays some solid reproducible data on the contentious issue of chemtrails. Now, while the focus of the documentary is primarily in America, these activities affect most of the people in the world. It's truly a worldwide crisis and has been so for at least 10 years. What we find in this documentary is the use of geoengineering as a justification presented by its supporters. Of course, this all rests on the faulty premise of global warming because global warming has been shown to be a hoax. The data has been cooked, it's demonstrable, and you can't believe it. Or they say climate change now. Well, climate change is a natural and ongoing process. So with all that in mind, what might be the real reasons behind the project? Well, let's look back a little bit in time. Let's look at the Svalbard Seed Bank. That was put together by a group of investors, including Bill Melinda Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, Monsanto Corporation, Sir Syngenta Foundation, and the government of Norway. Both Monsanto Corporation and Syngenta Foundation are leading agricultural companies active in the development of genetically modified seeds and related agricultural chemicals. So that begs the question, why with this focus of their business being genetically modified uh, organisms or seeds, would they invest monies into a seed bank in Svalbard that was designed to house heritage seeds, organic seeds from mostly most of the food producing uh, plants all over the world. And it's they're currently there today. Well sealed in this bomb proof effect, effectively bomb proof shelter inside a mountain. So this begs some interesting questions on itself. But even more interestingly, the Gates Foundation showed it had bought 500,000 Monsanto shares worth around $23 million in the second quarter of 2010. This is the same Monsanto that owns the patent for aluminum-resistant seeds as, just, as talked about in the documentary. So if this isn't happening, as many claim, then why the need for an aluminum resistant seed? Seems an admission to me that it is happening. We can look at some of the other effects in, of the past. We see uh, the vaccines, the, vaccine, the so called uh, pandemic last year for the H1N1, the swine flu, turned out to be a hoax perpetrated by the WHO. Now, the pharmaceutical industry became very enriched because the governments of many countries dumped big money into pharma to acquire these H1N1 vaccines that many people internationally refused to take. But don't worry, it's included in this year's seasonal, flying, uh, seasonal flu shot if you so choose to get it. We've seen attacks on supplements, Codex Alimentarius. We see attacks on organic foods, this Codex Alimentarius, and also legislation floating around right in Washington, D.C. In this documentary, we see attacks on the air, the water, and the, vir the environment, and on your health. Who benefits? Well, we look at the medical and the pharmaceutical monopolies. We look at universal health care the enrichment of these monopolies at the expense of everyone's wealth. Whether you use the services or not, you will still pay them. And perhaps this is designed to attend to the degraded health of all brought about by these monopolies' own hands. Seems somewhat of a perfect storm is forming here. Well, let's look at some of the health effects of <coughs> aluminum oxide. 
effectively, aluminum oxide will coat the interior of your veins and arteries. It will cause uh, the development of vascular disease due to the dysfunction of the vascular endothelium or the linings within the veins and arteries. Uh, tests were showed, I mean, the, the, the uh, science is here that shows that they cause an accumulation within the arteries and the narrowing of the arteries that lead to arteriosclerosis. Very clear in the literature. And it's easy to find, just, just look for it. Look at the health effects of barium. When barium accumulates in the body, it usually affects the functions of the nervous system. And it displays symptoms very similar to flu and can be misdiagnosed as such. Common symptoms of barium poisoning include muscle weakness and tremors, difficulty in breathing, stomach irritations accompanied by diarrhea, anxiety, cardiac irregularities such as abnormally high blood pressure and rapid heartbeat, and paralysis. And that information as well is very easily obtained. <clears throat> studying the effects of strontium. Strontium is water-soluble strontium can be a can be a health risk in high quantities. What's one of the most uh, prevalent issue that came out here was that strontium has the ability to displace calcium and so they act very similarly in your body. So you have effects on the bones and <clears throat> the teeth especially of young children of your sons and daughters. Uh, the, the strontium can cause bone issues and uh, a weakness in bones. So they did not specify spe which exact type of strontium they was found. There, there are several kinds of it so I would leave that to uh, your study. Certainly radioactive strontium which does exist is more of a health risk and known to cause uh, cancer and damage to genetic material in the cells. So if it's that variety you have a serious problem. Uh, some of the mitigations one can uh, affect uh, ion generators or ion pumps. Use them in your house. <clears throat> it pumps uh, charged ions into the air which attract the, the dust molecules and over time, they over short periods of time, these they become larger and larger and get heavy enough to fall out of the air so you're not breathing them. Uh, and all you have to do is vacuum them up, wipe them down, just like you normally dust. You might have to do it a little more frequently, though, because it does does cause the dust to fall out much more readily than it would normally. Uh, you can in, install HEPA filters in your HVAC systems that takes out very, very small particles out of the air as, as your heating and air conditioning will, operates. Uh, you may want to consider always, <coughs> excuse me, always having your... Uh, air conditioner and heat inside your car are still in the recirculation mode because that merely recirculates the air within the car and uh, not pulling in a lot of outside air as you travel especially long distances. Now bearing in mind it can get a little uncomfortable just start recirculating the air within the cabin so you can adjust the AC even in the winter time you can add heat to it to make it more comfortable. Some of the detox you might consider uh, cilantro, vitamin C, selenium, garlic, and a lot of other things. Uh, eating obviously a clean diet of pesticide free and hormone free foods. Um, you want to avoid the white things like refined sugar, refined flour, refined salt. That's, that's certainly good in any case to avoid those. Uh, adding the cilantro to your meal really helps to remove heavy metals. Uh, and I, want, I do want to make a comment with that to that though, but the aluminum oxide is a very difficult one to rid the body of. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was un, un, I couldn't find anything that specifically addressed detoxing aluminum oxide. So once it gets inside your arteries, it's very difficult to bring out. But I'm sure there are techniques available. I just haven't been able to dig, dig through them to find them. Um, Herbal detoxification teas contain mixtures of burdock root, dandelion root, ginger root, licorice root, sarsaparilla root, cardamom seed, cinnamon bark, and other herbs. Those, those are very helpful as well. So these are some of the techniques that one can use to protect him or herself uh, from these heavy metals. But the reality is, 
enrichment. Now, some say that this is nothing more than corporations seeking enrichment. But we see well-funded people investing in seemingly disparate projects. Now, many may think that the environmental and health effects of such projects may be the unforeseen consequences. Well, this kind of strains the intellect and flies in the face of reason. The health and environmental effects are either known or reasonably deducible, and this would call necessarily for substantial pre-deployment research, which was stated in the video to not have been done. What we are seeing is cumulative poisons creating toxic loads that manifest differently among people. You see asthma and other breathing difficulties, neurologic disorders, circulatory disease, and the list goes on. So when you really examine the evidence, it would be fairly easy for one to arrive at the realization that a state of war exists between worldwide humanity and these perpetrators and their government facilitators. However, this isn't a war of bombs and bullets. It's a more insidious war of slow poisoning, decimation of property, removal of the rights of choice and the pursuit of happiness, the, and the ultimate demise, both physical and financial, of many thousands, perhaps millions of people. And this situation isn't self-fixing. The governments clearly remain silent. Therefore, each man and woman needs to be offered this information, and I encourage every viewer to pass what in the world are they spraying along to everyone he or she knows. It's said information is power, but information unacted upon is worthless. It is incumbent on each of us to decide how to proceed bearing in mind that whatever is done or not done will directly affect not only our lives but the lives of every human being on earth both now and in the future thank you